Hello everyone and welcome back to Advective Weather. It's been a little while, but we have something to talk about here that's going to be of some substantiality here for Florida and Cuba. This is Tropical Depression 2. It's just formed in the North Atlantic Ocean as of an hour or two ago. This is the latest satellite imagery here, courtesy of TropicalTidbits.com, and there are a few things of note here. This storm is weak and it is in conditions unfavorable for strengthening at least to a considerable degree, although the National Hurricane Center forecasts just a little bit. And again, as the satellite shows, this thing is disorganized. You can see the center, that kind of spin is more exposed. And the thunderstorms, the convection that's causing the rainfall is a bit dissociated, decoupled, if you will, from the storm itself. And that's uh, being displaced there to the northeast a little bit. So the system's disorganized. It'll be short-lived, and rainfall is going to be the primary hazard here. Maximum sustained winds expected to get up to around 40 miles per hour with this system at peak. So let's talk about the setup for this thing. When it comes to sea surface temperatures, you want to be in the greens or higher. And this thing is in the yellow, that's 27 degrees Celsius or higher, and it's actually moving into more favorable sea surface temperatures. So you might be asking, okay, well, it's looking great there. Why is this not going to strengthen much? And the reason is here. First things first, our water vapor imagery, which is the thing below those lines. Uh, that's the imagery you see there. You can see there's not much moisture associated with this. And there's a lot of dry air there to the south that this thing's going to entrain, making life difficult for it. The other thing that's difficult is wind shear. You want to see those greens and yellows over the storm. It's currently got 25 to 30 knots. That's in the reds. And it's moving into a region that's going to have very similar shear with higher amounts of shear moving in its general direction as well. So this thing has very unfavorable moisture, very unfavorable wind shear, but it has the thermal energy to develop, and that's why it's even become a tropical depression in the first place. So let's talk about the official forecast here. This is the system. It's expected to peak as a tropical storm here in about a day or so. Uh, and you can see that the primary threat will be rainfall for Florida and Cuba, one to three inches cited by the National Hurricane Center. The system will peak with winds of 40 miles per hour, making it a tropical storm as we head into Friday before weakening back down to a tropical depression on Saturday and then dissipating by Sunday afternoon. All right, well, let's take a look at some weather models here, and this is what we're looking at. So it's not really relevant to look beyond when these lines kind of touch Cuba on the track side there on the left, but this is a uh, forecast track here from a forecast system uh, that uses ensembles, tweaks the conditions a little bit, and this kind of gives you an idea of forecast confidence. So we're pretty confident that this system is going to slowly but surely move southward and eventually in the general direction of Cuba before the remnants of this is likely going to move towards Florida and then move away off into the Atlantic Ocean. Again, this could bring some moisture, some rainfall, nothing more than that. It will have dissipated by this point. Let's take a look at the intensity forecast here. You can see that rather clearly. This is, again, expected to strengthen into a tropical storm by the Hurricane Center. Most models keep it below, although we do have one that puts it into a moderately strong tropical storm there. Uh, starting to get into the moderate region there, 45 to 50 knots. That's nothing to sneeze at um, when it comes to a tropical storm. So uh, in, in a worst case scenario, this thing has winds of 50, maybe even 60 miles per hour, but I seriously doubt that. And that's still not even that strong, not even a category one hurricane. Again, the primary threat here is going to be rainfall one to three inches as cited by the National Hurricane Center. All right, well, what can you do with this thing? Main thing is just to know your risks here. And we've talked about it a lot today. Make sure that you know the threats, storm surge, flooding, strong winds, tornadoes, and rip currents. Those are the big ones, the tropical cyclones. This one's going to be a rainmaker. It's the big thing. Storm surge isn't going to be a big deal. Rip currents are going to be marginal, but not in zero. An isolated tornado or two is possible. But again, the heavy rain, that's the big threat with this. Um, so make sure that you're keeping an eye on that. And even that isn't looking to be overly serious or historic or anything. But just make sure that you know what to do in the event that you're in a flooding situation. Um, when it comes to evacuation zones, as this says, I don't anticipate that evacuations are going to be ordered for this. Although if they are, you can stay tuned right here and we'll continue to keep you up to date with that. And make sure you know your home structural risks as well and make sure that you know how to get to a secure place if you need one. Well, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you can hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel or join our Discord server for some fun in our community. And be sure to check out our video that we'll have tomorrow on the severe weather that's expected to go on in Texas there with some large hail, perhaps New Mexico as well. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.